Hi everyone, I'm Marion Kellner and welcome to Local Bias. I am here today with my illustrious guest, Roberta Wilmore. Welcome, Roberta. Thank you, Marion. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thank you. So um, we know each other a little bit outside mm -hmm. of this TV studio, mm -hmm. but I don't know a lot about you. Mm -hmm. And I know we're both inhabitants of Western Massachusetts. Mm -hmm and happy to be here. Yes. And so uh, I'm very curious about a little bit of how you got here and how you feel being here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good, because that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> hey. Um, how did I get here? I was looking for land, and it was an accident that I wandered all the way out to Western Massachusetts. I had no idea how beautiful this place was. Um, I wandered out here from Cambridge, and it was a lifelong dream to have a farm, and I knew it needed to be in New England, and I ended up settling in Ashfield, where I've been for 20 years, which is the longest I've been anywhere. Did you want a farm ever since you were a little yes, girl? Yes, I wanted a farm my entire life, so I had to save my money, took a decade to make it out here. Um, I wanted to have horses. I wanted a place where my, as I said earlier, stressed out friends could come and see open space. Um, and I wanted to make it possible for kids who wanted to be around horses who couldn't be to come. And I just wanted to be able to look outside and see open fields. And yeah. So and it made, happened. It did. You made it happen. Yeah. And it's a very beautiful part of the country, mm -hmm. and you have a barn mm -hmm. and horses in the barn. Well, I only have two in the barn right now. <laughs> two right now. Yeah, that, that doesn't, that's not many, but <laughs> yes, there are two. And you would have kids come out from mm -hmm. the cities, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and spend some time in your house mm -hmm. and learning yeah. to ride? For 12 years, I had kids coming from all over the country. Wow. And, um, they came because they wanted to be involved with horses. They didn't come because they were talked into it. They came because it was something they wanted to do, and I made the farm available. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that's a big part of why I came. Um, not the only reason I came. I just really wanted to own land. It's so. essential, right? In every conversation with people, what really goes to their heart is land. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, whether you're actually on the land like you are or in a certain part mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just curious before we get to other aspects of being in Western Mass of how these kids responded to the horses. The horses are very big. They're huge. <laughs> They're gigantic. Yeah. Um, well, kids, the kids who came were, they had various levels of experience. They weren't all beginners. Mm -hmm. Um, I let them take over the place, so it was a second home. Kids who came, uh, usually came six, seven, eight years in a row. Uh, I still hear from them. I still see them. Many of them are in college. Some have children now. Um, the thing they had trouble with was no internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes you would see kids come and for several days they were looking at their telephones, trying to, wishing for a signal. <laughs> Just hoping. And, and that hoping. was interesting to see because you could see that they were addicted to that. Oh, yeah. Um, but as far as the animals were concerned, I would say that... Um, they were already interested in, in horses before they came. I did not talk anybody into that mm -hmm. piece. You had to be interested in horses, and you had to interview, and you had to share your interest, and you had to have an adult who would support your interest mm -hmm. um, so that it wasn't something that just fell apart the moment you left. Yeah. So it was just one of the best experiences of my life. Without that's a great. doubt. Wow, that's yeah. great. And one of the things that, that I really loved about it is that I brought a lot of kids of color to to come out 
to be on that farm. And so there was my community mm -hmm. that I was missing by coming out here. Yeah. So, Well, Western Mass, at least this area of it, it's different down in Holyoke, Springfield, but this is a pretty white mm -hmm. area. And um, how, how do you respond to that, or what's your experience being, being here? That's a funny question. <laughs> yeah, that's a big question. But it's a real question. Um, well, I have been in this situation many times in my life. Um, in order for me to be out in the country, in this part of the country, uh, I had to accept being one of very few people of color. Um, it's, it's doable. <laughs> doable. It's doable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in people, and I'm interested in all kinds of people. And what I love about Western Mass is, and particularly the hill towns, is there are all kinds of people, and there's a different kind of diversity out there. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be racial um, or ethnic, but I think that there's still diversity when you have different people doing different things. When I feel lonely, which happens sometimes, I head for a more urban area. Uh -huh. um, there are more people of color in urban areas. Uh -huh. um, but there are reasons for that. That has to do with history. I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But yes, there are times where I need to see more people that look like me. Yeah. But I recommend, really, that everybody should have this experience of being one of very few in yes. a community. Uh, yes. There's a lot to learn about there's a that. There's a lot to learn. And, and then there's all that we have in common mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So I find people who have things that they are interested in that I'm interested in. And what's really important to me is just being able to talk to people, even if we have nothing in common. I really like ha being around a diverse group of people. Yeah. So, for example, I know that there's a lot of class difference here. Mm -hmm. People who are quite well off and mm -hmm. people who are really not mm -hmm. and struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's diversity in age, mm -hmm. in um, educational background, mm -hmm. in um, creative pursuits. Yep. And so forth. Yes. So I could see th I could see that diversity here. Mm -hmm. And um, and the thing that I think is greatly missing is the dialogue mm -hmm. between these groups. Mm -hmm. And so when you say that you like to talk to anyone and mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. uh, that's a great thing. And I'm wondering... How do I do that? <laughs> yeah. Is there someone that stands out in your mind of really bridging a divide through a conversation? A particular person, you mean? Yeah, or a, a, an event or something like that. Well, one of here. the things I'm going to be doing actually very soon um, is having some dinners at my house that are very um, intentional in terms of the mixture of people. I, When I say I like to talk to different people, I mean it. I mean I think it's important for me to have conversations with people who aren't even necessarily happy that I am here in Western Mass, uh, because I need to um, try to get a sense of why someone would feel that way. And I was taught, and I believe in this, that people sometimes must learn to agree to disagree. These are the things I like about Western Mass. I think people know how to agree to disagree out here. Um, so, in, you know, intentional gatherings where I can talk with different kinds of people is the mm -hmm. kind of thing that I'm always interested in. Yeah. Um, and when I talk about diversity out here, I think it's it has to do with how you were raised and where you were raised and what your influences were. And so you can find that in any room. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I love about Western Mass is I think there's all kinds of people out here. Um, there are the people who were born and raised here. That's one group that I find very interesting. And then there's a lot of people who've traveled out here. 
like yeah. I have, and mm -hmm. and you. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we have the stories that we bring with us. Oh yeah, um, the stories are amazing, and I think my eyes were opened in that regard when I took a memoir writing mm -hmm. course at mm -hmm. GCC. Mm -hmm. And so there were all sorts of people in that classroom that I discovered I had all sorts of stereotypes about. You mm -hmm. know, it was like... Uh, you mean bias? <laughs> yeah, bias, <laughs> local bias. <laughs> you know, oh, I don't know what I thought of them, but it was not them. Mm -hmm. I did not see them. Mm -hmm. And we wrote our stories mm -hmm. in that class. Mm -hmm. And it was like... When they say the veil has fallen from your eyes, mm -hmm. it was like people just emerged with the most amazing, unexpected, mm -hmm. deep, challenging, funny uh, sagas mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so even when people appear to be similar, we're, we are similar, and so yeah. we're similar human beings with our emotional content and our sensitivities and feelings and thoughts, mm -hmm. but also so rich in these individual histories. Absolutely. And so that is a huge part, I think, of being out here. Um, one of the things I really, really love about being here, and I really wanted to talk about this, is that I think it takes a lot of courage to live out here. And I love courageous people. I think that you have to practice using courage or you lose it. And it's not easy to live out here. And I'm speaking a lot about the hill towns. It's not easy, and I find that I'm living in a community in Ashfield where people are simply trying to live a life that they have dreamed about that matters to them. And so I love that. Um, and at the same time, there's this diversity of perspective um, about the world and about... Uh, family and about uh, professional pursuits that is, I find very refreshing. So I'm always looking for opportunities to talk mm -hmm. to groups of people. Yeah. Um, and I think there are a lot of opportunities like that oh, yeah. in Western Mass. The greatest gift you can give to someone is talking with them and listening to them. That's right. Right? Everybody right. wants to be heard. That's right. And so every person you meet is an opportunity mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. people really... I know if someone is looking like you're listening to me now, mm -hmm. that's a gift. Mm -hmm. And as we go through our lives, our daily lives, rushing here, there, in and out of the store, whatever we do, how, how are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fine. Everything's great, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's not, there aren't that many opportunities in a day to really speak your truth and be heard. No, there aren't. But there's something about this part of Massachusetts where if you will take that chance, you will hear some interesting stories and meet some very interesting people. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I, I think that makes me sad about life in the city, I actually love the city and I love the country. I don't like the suburbs very much and I've lived in all of those places. But one thing that makes me sad about the city is the pace is so fast mm -hmm. that you don't get a chance to really do that kind of well, even waving when somebody goes by the house, mm -hmm. which is what happens in, in Western Mass in the hill yeah. towns. Mm -hmm. You don't see that. You wave to somebody in the city when they drive by you and they think there's something the matter with you. And they, you know, don't want to be bothered. <laughs> um, so it's a very, very special place. And I think there's a lot of different characters. Now, a lot of times people will ask me, well, how'd you get here? I mean, you asked me. <laughs> what do you, how'd you get here? Which is such a funny question. I got here the same way everybody else got here. I got in my car and I drove to Asheville. Um, but it really was an accident. And yet, when I saw how interesting this area was, how courageous the people are here in trying really hard to live a life that they want to live. Sometimes people are working four jobs out here um, because they do whatever they have to do. We do whatever we have to do. Mm -hmm. When I first came here, I was actually commuting two and a half hours back to Boston. So I would work from home a few days a week and I would commute back the others. And that is a serious commute. Yeah. But 
I was so ecstatic about having a farm and being able to be here. And, and then there's trying to be able to stay, mm -hmm. which I think most people out here have to work very hard at doing. Yeah. So I think of, of this area as an area filled with courageous people. And I think courage is critical in life because I think life goes by so quickly. It sure does. Um, and so I like it that people are trying out here to live a life that's important to them mm -hmm. and that that's kind of what we have in common. Yeah. And I think the courage comes through also in so many groups that are active here. Mm -hmm. So you have groups that are death and dying groups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, groups that uh, address racial issues, mm -hmm. gay issues, mm -hmm. creating communities mm -hmm. at the senior center, mm -hmm. the co-op. Mm -hmm. I mean, any... Parenting. Parenting. Children's groups. Yeah. Yeah. Farmers. Yeah. Horse people. We can go on and on <laughs> and on. Then there's the hunters. They've got their groups. Yeah. yeah. But people really... Uh, are looking at their lives, looking for people they can either share mm -hmm. those lives with or to have these kinds of mm -hmm. dialogues that mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that takes courage. It does. Too. It does. Because you have to be willing to take the chance even though you have no idea if someone's going to be open to you or accepting of you. Um, I just think that that is sort of a real way of walking through the world. Mm -hmm. And I am just very glad to be here, as hard as it is. I just feel so, every single day, I feel lucky to be here. I open my eyes and I look outside and I look at that open land and I go, what a lucky, blessed woman I am. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. A fox came into my yard the other day. They've been in my yard, too. That's magical. <laughs> it is magical. I'm not too thrilled about some of the animals that come into the barn. But uh, I've been running. Well, lately I've been running from a possum, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> ow! Get out! <laughs> Who wins that, that argument? They leave because I'm loud. <laughs> I am loud. The animals are cool. The animals are very cool. I actually saw a big cat. Oh. In my first couple of years here, I was driving home from Boston um, about three o'clock in the morning, and it crossed the road. And then How I looked like German Shepherd size. Wow! And I looked, and I thought I was dreaming because I thought it was half asleep. And then I saw it go, <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "No, I was not <laughs> dreaming that." When I went home, I took the time to look it up, and that's what I saw. Good. And I wondered until my neighbors also had seen the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how often they go through. I know they have a huge six, seven, eight hundred mile uh, journey that they do. But yeah. now that's a serious animal. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing about my farm is when I have groups of people from the city, particularly when I have my friends of color come out, they come out and they say loud and clear, how'd you find this place? <laughs> Wondering how I could have even made it out here. Um, but it is so fun to see my friends get out of the car and begin to unwind. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just lucky. We're very lucky. We're really lucky. And to live in beauty, you know, is such a privilege. Mm -hmm. And I think that something, I used to live in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and work in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And I would find I love New York. Of beauty. I love New York, I have to say. It's okay. But I haven't, I haven't lived there, so that's a whole different yeah, story. Yeah, it's a different story. No, yeah. New York has many wonderful aspects, mm -hmm. but my quest was always to find the beauty there. Mm -hmm. So whether it was in the Botanic Gardens or New York at dawn is gorgeous with the sun coming up and reflecting off of the brick buildings. And, and watching the whole thing come alive. Yeah. Yeah. That's magical. Yes. But I think one of the great deprivations that come with not having the means to get out of the yeah, city. Yeah, that's a problem. Is that you're living, if you're poor, mm -hmm. you're living in a neighborhood that might have beauty in the people mm -hmm. or in the community, but your actual surroundings are often not beautiful. That's right. And you have to, to have people on top of you all the time. 
mean, that's the difference in how we are living out here, is that we're not squished together and forced in a way that sometimes can feel like you are suffocating. Mm -hmm. And I love the city. I really, really love There's the diversity that I need to see and need to feel and, and to see people, more people that look like me is means I need to go to the city mm -hmm. in this area of the country. Um, so I really love it. But that living on top of each other, if you can't get out, and I've got all kinds of friends making decent salaries that still can't get out of New York City. So it's not very easy to yeah. get out of there. Um, and there's an energy field. When I lived there, it was almost like <laughs> I was caught in a web. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so big mm -hmm. and vast. That's a good way to, dis to it describe that. Yeah. It's almost like a magnetic field, and you're trying to... <laughs> wow, that's a great uh, way to describe that. That's true. We do not have that here. No, you can roam here. You can roam. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You can get lost. Yeah. People get mad at you when you get lost, but you can get lost. <laughs> I was once with a friend out here who was probably at the time um, in her 80s, and we went for a walk in the woods, and she was just dying for us to get lost. And I was saying, she said, oh, we can sleep out here for the night. I said, I am not sleeping out here for the night, so you got to figure out how we get out of here. Uh, but, yeah, you can roam, and you can just spend your whole day Mm -hmm. discovering something new yeah. that might be right down the road. Yeah. So. Yeah, one of my most enjoyable times is just sitting in my backyard mm -hmm. and just watching, you know, the clouds go by, the birds land in the trees. This is when it's a little warmer mm -hmm. than it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the light change and the different temperatures of the sun on my skin and... Um, the whole sensory experience, quiet. It's hard to explain that to people who don't have that experience. You know, if you, if, if you go somewhere else and you try to explain that in the way that you just did, they might go ho-hum. <laughs> <laughs> but if you get to experience it, then you realize yeah. that there's something quite special. So sometimes I worry that it'll get really populated out here. In fact, when I first came out here, I have to say, and I'm a little ashamed of this, that I was worried that a whole lot of people that I knew would come out here. And only a couple of very close friends came. Uh, but when I found that I was worried about it, I was saying, shame on you, Roberta. What? And that happened to me so quickly. I was like, oh, my God, I hope nobody else <laughs> experiences this or sees this. So there are times I know where people worry about it getting very busy out here. But I think that you have to want this kind of lifestyle. You have to be willing to drive a half hour to go to the grocery store. You have to understand that there are days where you cannot get out if the ice is too bad and you're on a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And everybody does not want to live that way. Yeah. That's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. And you have to be brave enough to do it. Yeah. I had to leave my car a distance from my house a few days ago, or I guess a week ago, and walk down because of the ice so I could get out. Now, as you know, I recently broke my ankle, and I'm still recovering. So I was out there going through the woods and walking in the middle of the road <laughs> trying to get to my car. And it was really like I thought I was in the movie Deliverance. It was intense. <laughs> I was worried about some eating me because it was early in the morning, but I made it. So yeah. that takes courage. Yeah. And that's why I feel like there's a lot of courageous people out here. Yeah. And even going up to your barn. That's intense. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to go up there at night. Well, you have to get across the road first. I mean, <laughs> if there's ice, you have to get across the driveway. And sometimes you have to sit on something and slide across <laughs> the, one side of the driveway to the other. Uh, so, yeah, that kind of stuff you laugh about. But, I hope uh, someone takes a little video of that. I'd like to see it. Oh, uh, no, no. That's, no. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> yeah. So, courage, life in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, life in the city, mm -hmm. and then I w I'd like to just explore, you know, I, I teach summer school up at NMH, as you mm -hmm. know, and I invited you there to mm -hmm. talk to uh, my class, mm -hmm. and I teach English mm -hmm. to international students, mm -hmm. 
and you did a little workshop with them. And I think the theme of courage was the basis of your interaction with them. Was it? Yeah. And it was very important because a lot of, especially females, who um, I have found tend to speak softer or defer mm -hmm. to the male voice or whatever. And I found that you were encouraging them to find their voice. Yes. yes. Which is courage. Yes. So this theme, I've seen this theme in your life, mm -hmm. you know, in different settings with different people. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as the bottom line mm -hmm. and encouraging them, speak louder, speak your truth, mm -hmm. stay with yourself, that kind well, of you thing. Well, you have such a nice way of saying that. I love it. Um, that has been a theme in my life, and I would say just about everything that I have done uh, has taken a tremendous amount of courage. And so, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's good to think about that because um, most of the work that I do has to do with either encouraging people to find their voice and find their courage, or it's about bringing people together. And then it's find your courage and find your voice. Uh, sometimes it's about finding your courage so that we can all be together. And sometimes it's about going after something you want to do or being somewhere you want to be. Um, that is what I tend to do, whether I'm in a corporate environment or a community organization, or doing some entrepreneurial work or consulting. It's always, it always does seem to have that theme. So thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> yeah, and, and courage comes from the French word for heart. Oh, really? Cour, not that I could speak French, but I, so it's to have courage is to have heart. Okay. To be with your heart, to mm -hmm. develop what's in mm -hmm. your heart, to speak from your heart, mm -hmm. to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. So these themes of speaking your truth and having courage and connecting with people are all embedded in, that, in, in the heart and in the word encourage mm -hmm. and courage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just very interesting. Do you think... Um, your background, were you brought up to be courageous, or where where do you think this strong theme has well, come from? Well, I think without a doubt, I was brought up to um, not allow self-limiting beliefs to get in my way, yeah. and to go after the things I want to do in the way that I wanted to do them. And I feel so lucky that I was raised that way. Yes. So, yeah, my whole life has been about going after these adventures, and this was a big one. Yes, and that's a great note to end on, and I loved having this conversation with you. Maybe you can thank come you. back another time. Thank you, And so Marianne. once again, thank you for listening to Local Bias, the guest Roberta Wilmore, and um, look forward to being with you next time. Mm -hmm.